The name of the game is presented by Bravo, the marketing arm of Ash Brokerage Corporation, the practice enhancement company. Hello everyone, I'm Steve Savant, syndicated financial columnist and host of the weekly online talk show, Steve Savant's Money, the name of the game. I'm answering consumer questions from insurancelibrary.com and today's question is, what are the best whole life companies? Well, I have to divide that into a couple sections. One is, what are the best whole life companies for indemnification and what are the best whole life companies if you're using this for supplemental income? There are several great carriers out there that are really good dividend paying whole life contracts. If you're using it for indemnification, you want to look at the most benevolent underwriter because that's the game that has to be played in permanent whole life because you're going to be paying this premium for the rest of your life. So I want to find out from an indemnification or protection point of view, who gives me the best number because of my health consideration. The secondary part is if I'm using whole life for a actual income play, I want to be able to use whole life and a contract that actually is going to give me more rate of return. And that's how I look at it. Is it income or is it indemnification? Can I borrow against my life insurance contract? Well, if you have a cash value life insurance contract and it has cash that is exceeding your surrender uh, period or your surrender charges, you more than likely can get to some of this cash. Some people borrow from their policy using policy loans. When you get past about the 15th year, you could also even take your money that you, you actually originally put in and take that out via a withdrawal. So whether it's a withdrawal of basis or original premiums that you put in, or it's a policy loan, you can take money out of your policy at any time. There's no 59 and a half rule uh, like they are in qualified plans. So a lot of people like to use life insurance as a sinking fund or a reservoir for cash value. Those policies and withdrawals to basis, especially if it's done after that 15th year in the withdrawal period, those monies come out without taxation. It's a really good area to have some of your money in. And today's question is, can I sell my life insurance policy? Well, number one, a life insurance policy is personal property. Could you sell it? I think you can, usually through the life settlement market. But keep in mind that the original reason that you sold the life insurance had, was not to sell it for that specific pur uh, purpose. And most carriers and life insurance companies are going to take a dim view on you trying to buy insurance for just the purpose of selling it. But if, you're, if the reason you bought life insurance has no longer, it doesn't exist any longer, you could go ahead and sell it on the secondary market of life insurance settlement and you could sell it for cash. Generally, a cash value uh, contract is going to get a little bit more than what you have in your policy, sometimes a lot more depending upon the death benefit and your timeline. Can you sell it? You could sell it. And again, I recommend make sure that you're doing this for the right reasons and make sure that your coverage is no longer necessary. I'm answering consumer questions from insurancelibrary.com and today's question is, can you cash in life insurance policy? Well, providing that it's a cash value policy, you can go ahead and cash it in. Just a heads up, if the cash value is greater than your premiums paid, or in other words, greater than your basis, you will have to pay ordinary income tax on the gain. And some of these contracts may actually have surrender charges. If they have surrender charges, you'll not only have to pay taxes on your ordinary income tax on gain, but you'll also have to pay the surrender charge. Now, just keep in mind, I like the liquidity. If you can borrow from your policy and keep it in force, it's a better deal. If you have to cash it in, you may want to think about, well, I'm just cashing it in to go to another policy. You may want to use a 1035 exchange, again, to bypass the kind of issues like taxable event on ordinary income tax if you have gain in the policy. What is cash value life insurance? Well, cash value life insurance can either be in whole life, participating whole life, it can be in current assumption universal life, it can be an index universal life, or variable universal life. Those are the four cash value products. They, we always have to pay the policy expense loads first. When the, once those are paid, we can take the crediting from that, whether it's interest rate or dividend or whatever it is, we credit that into the policy cash values and they accumulate. And during the accumulation, it's tax deferred. And when the money comes out, providing that the policy is kept in force for the policy insured's life, those proceeds, withdrawals to basis or policy loans to gain, can come out tax free. Is life insurance a good investment? Well, that's a very controversial question. Depending upon what form of cash value life insurance you use, you could be using at participating whole life, you could be looking at current, assumption, interest rate, universal life, index universal life, or variable life. All of those four different platforms require you to do a financial profile to make sure you understand your investment risk 
and the time horizon, which are very important to use this. They have tax advantages, there's no doubt about that. But you need to make sure that you're suitable for these products. Is it a good investment? If it's configured right, it can be great. If it's not done correctly by design, it's not going to really be a good deal. So if it's done correct, it could be a great supplemental part of your retirement plan that can really help you in your golden years and during your retirement period. What is permanent life insurance? Well, permanent life insurance could be universal life, it could be whole life, it could be variable life. Any of those three are permanent forms. Depending upon how far out you want to go in the maturity date, some of these contracts go to age 100, some even farther out. Even some guaranteed permanent contracts, you can make it small enough in the timeline to, to actually terminate at age 85. You want to make sure that if you're using permanent insurance, you're telling me that you have permanent financial indebtedness or future obligations that are not going to go away. And that's why we're not looking at term. You're looking at permanent forms of insurance to cover indebtedness, future obligation, charitable intent, and to replace a person's income when they die. What is universal life? Well, universal life insurance was invented in the 80s. It's kind of a combination of buying term and investing the difference. It has different crediting methods, which could be interest rate, could be indexing, or could be separate subaccounts. Those will give you three different ways to accumulate cash. If you're looking for death benefit and it needs to be permanent, you need to make sure that the universal life contract that you choose has guaranteed death benefit for the period that you need. The cash accumulation ideas, whether it's interest rate or whether it's indexing or separate subaccounts, those will bring some accumulating cash and it could be used for some kind of retirement supplement plan to augment your 401k. What is whole life? Well, whole life is a permanent product. It can go all the way out to age 121. And the products that are usually sold today are called participating. They're actually returning pieces of the premium you paid, a portion of it, back to you as a dividend. It's a return of unused premium. Whole life will give you the coverage that you need for the entire period, usually at minimum to age 100, and again, out to age 121. And those dividends, even though they're not guaranteed, those dividends could be a nice uh, supplemental uh, retirement plan that you can put aside with your qualified plans. Whole Life has been around for a long time, and if you have a permanent need, Whole Life should be one of the permanent products that you look at. Is Whole Life Insurance a good investment? Well, if you've been on the web, you know there's a lot of detractors on this. Whole Life as an investment are for conservative investors for people who want to beat at least the treasuries because they've had a history of being able to at least on over a long period of time to do a little bit better than treasuries. So if you're looking at whole life as a supplemental income and it's configured correctly by using the lowest possible base amount with term riders and a paid up addition rider, that combination could be good for a very conservative long term investor or long term savers mindset. And remember, it's tax advantaged withdrawals of basis and policy loans to gain could come out absolutely free as long as you keep the contract in force for the policy insured. Well, that's our consumer questions for today. If you have any questions, just submit them to www.insurancelibrary.com.